As a single person, buying a flat on your own can be confusing. Not to mention, purchasing a home in Singapore can be quite expensive. In this video, we are going to discuss how singles can buy BTO, resale, or EC, which housing grants are eligible for singles, and how the income ceiling is calculated. Okay, let's start with the basics first. Which HDB can singles buy? After mid-2024, with the new HDB classification, single first-timers are allowed to buy three things. Number one, apply for two-room flexi BTO flats in all locations across standard, plus, and prime housing projects, and buy a standard or plus flat of any size in the resale market except for three gen flats, and buy a two-room flexi prime flat in the resale market. Regarding age requirement, most people only know that you need to be 35 and above if you are single and want to buy an HDB. But there's actually a caveat stated in HDB website itself. If you want to buy a resale flat, you can be at least 21 years old or above if you are widowed or an orphan where at least one of your deceased parents was a Singaporean or a PR. Now let's talk about HDB schemes that apply to singles. The first scheme is the Single Singapore Citizen Scheme or SSCS. Under SSCS, you are the sole owner of the HDB flat. You have to be a Singapore citizen at least 35 years old and either single or divorced. If widowed, orphan, or single parent, you can apply under this scheme from the age of 21. There may be further eligibility conditions depending on the type of flat you buy. You can choose only between an HDB BTO or a resale flat under SSCS. The BTO option is cheaper but more restrictive and also requires a much longer wait. Sales of balance flats or SBF is also an option but it has its own restrictions and only launch once per year. If you want to buy a resale HDB flat, there are fewer restrictions. More importantly, you can choose any size and any location you like. It is important to note that the monthly income ceiling is $7,000 for all HDB BTO applications. The next scheme is JSS or Joint Single Schemes. The JSS, on the other hand, allows up to four single Singaporean citizens who are at least 35 years old, for example, unmarried couples or best friends, to apply for a flat together. Apart from BTO or resale HDB flat options, you can also apply for an executive condominium or EC unit. The total monthly household income ceiling for all persons listed in the EC application must not exceed $16,000. Here's a scenario of buying a home with someone who's not your legal spouse. Under SSCS, only one person can legally own the flat. If you are the owner, your partner is considered a tenant by the law. In the event of your passing, your partner can't inherit the flat unless it's specified in your will. If both or all parties prefer legal recognition of flat ownership, for example, if you plan to split the housing cost 50-50, then applying under JSS might be a better option. Under JSS, SS, you will need to decide if the two of you will hold joint tenancy or tenancy in common of the HDB flat. With the joint tenancy, both of you are registered as full owners of the flat. If one partner passes away, the other remains the rightful owner and vice versa. But under tenancy in common, you each are part owners legally owning only a share of the flat, for example, 50% each. Your deceased partner's share will not automatically go to you unless it was explicitly stated in their will. Therefore, it's a good idea to write your will early. Now, let's talk about housing grants. First-time applicants purchasing a flat alone or with a non-resident spouse can apply for an Enhanced CPF Housing Grant or EHG for singles up to $40,000. If you are buying with other first-timer singles, up to two singles may each be eligible for an EHG of up to $40,000 each, so the total cap is $80,000. If you are a first-timer and buying a resale flat on your own, you may be eligible for a singles grant of $40,000 for the purchase of a two-room to four-room resale flat or $25,000 for a five-room resale flat. Do note that for resale flats, you must first qualify for the CPF housing grant for resale flats for singles before applying for the EHG. You may also apply for the proximity housing grant if you meet the eligibility conditions. Singles buying an EC are not eligible for any housing grants. So, which one you should go for? BTO, resale flat, or EC? It will boil down to your eligibility and how much flexibility do you need. To make it easier to understand, let's look at this table. For BTO and resale, singles can bought 
through SSCS or JSS scheme, but for EC, you can buy only using the JSS scheme. Regarding the income ceiling, if you buy BTO via SSCS, the income ceiling is $7,000. But if you buy the BTO via JSS, then the income ceiling is $14,000. Regarding resale, in the past, there's no income ceiling. But starting the second half of 2024, there is an income ceiling of $14,000 to buy plus and prime resale flats. For standard flats or older resale flats launched before the new HDB classification is introduced, there's still no income ceiling. For EC, the income ceiling is $16,000. So what if you own a condo or a landed house? Can you buy HDB? If you want to buy a BTO or EC, you cannot own a private residential home in the past 30 months. If you want to buy a resale, the new rule stated that you have to discard the private residential home in the past 15 months. Regarding CPF housing grants, if you buy EC, there's no grant at all, but there are some grants if you want to buy a BTO or a resale flat. Now let's talk about how the income ceiling is calculated. The HDB income ceiling is calculated based on the gross monthly household income of all applicants and co-applicants, if any, listed in the application. If you buy the flat with your friend, listed as a co-applicant, then the sum of both monthly incomes must not exceed the income ceiling. Let's say you earn $4,500 a month and your co-applicant earns $3,000 a month. That means your gross monthly household income is $7,500. Note that your gross monthly household income includes the total basic salary with other forms of income like bonuses, allowances, and employer CPF. If you are a salaried employee but have a variable salary, then the gross monthly income is the average of the last three months pay, which means this is your salary before CPF deduction. For instance, if you earn $2,000 and then the next month $4,000 and $2,000 in the last three months, then your gross monthly income would be $2,000 plus $4,000 plus $2,000 divided by 3. If you are an employee with a fixed salary like most people, HDB considers your most recent salary for income statement. If you go on no pay leave for up to 6 months, your last received pay will be considered. However, if your no pay leave is already beyond 6 months ago, then you are considered unemployed for the assessment. If you are a freelancer, gig worker, entrepreneur, or self-employed individual, then HDB uses an average of your income for the past 6 months before your application. Note that HDB does not factor in bonuses and income from occasional overtime work when determining the income ceilings. However, regular allowances, whether fixed or variable, for example like transport allowance, are taken into consideration for the calculation. If you want to know more on how to apply for a BTO or how to buy a resale flat without an agent, click link in the description down below as I have discussed them in my other videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye!